In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a simple surface using feature lines. We'll explore some of the various feature line tools as well as grading groups to help grade a site. Let's dive right into it. First thing that we're looking at here is a residential neighborhood. We have a cul-de-sac with a pond adjacent to a wetland. As you can see, there is some existing grade. And if I click this, you know if it's a surface when you get a ribbon popping up. So you see how it says surface data reference? So right now I have some EG, which is my existing grade. I'm actually going to turn that style to a hidden style, just so it doesn't bog this thing down here. So I'm going to hide that. Now the first thing you're going to want to do if you're creating a surface is, well, you want to create a surface. So you're going to go into tool space here, and you can access that via the home tab up here or in the command line via tool space. So what I'm going to do is to go to the surfaces prospector, and I'm going to do create surface. Right now it's going to pop up a dialog box, and I want to call this FG for final grade. So it asks if I wanted to do a style and I want to select a different style. Uh, right here I have some different options that I can choose and these are all built in. These are ones that, I've, uh, that I have in my program. So yours might look a little bit different. You might actually have to create some styles. So here I'm gonna use a contour style. I like that. And it's gonna ask what surface layer. I like PR Surf for now. So I've created a surface but I need to be able to define a surface. Now you can define a surface via a few different options here. You can define a surface through break lines, which is a series of feature lines that we're going to be touching into today. You can define it by contours, which is really just a polyline with an elevation. And then you can also create a surface from point groups. Now what we will be diving in today are break lines. So Let's go ahead and, and dive right into building our surface. The first area that I want to dive into is this pond. This red line that you see right here is the pond top of bank. This is going to be the very tip top of our pond that holds the water in the pond. So one easy way to do this is what you can do is you can go up to the feature line tool up here and I'm gonna go to the feature line tool and I wanna create feature lines from objects. Now it's going to ask me which objects. So I'm going to want to select all of these pond contours. There's gonna be a dialog box that pops up. So one of the options here is a site. So think of a site as just the site of the project. You can have different sites and what that means is if you have all of your feature lines or surfaces on the site, they're all talking to each other. Now, if you have separate sites, that means that anything you create in site one won't necessarily talk to site two. So for now, I'm just gonna select this site one. It's gonna ask me what layer I want these feature lines on. I don't really care if they're on layer zero right now, I'm just gonna move forward. And then it's gonna ask me if I want to erase existing entities. I think I'm going to erase the existing entities. Sometimes, uh, you know, we can keep these, but for this purpose, I'm going to erase. So I'm going to press OK, and then voila, they changed. So we now are cooking with fire here with feature lines. I'm going to go ahead and select this feature line. I know that this is the pond top of bank. Now there's a couple ways to start adding elevations. I'm going to show you one way, which is up here. You have a ribbon tab. You know you're on a ribbon tab when you see feature line showing right there. Think of a feature line as just a line with elevations associated. So I'm gonna go over here and start adding elevations from the elevation editor. Here we have a toolbox showing the station of each of these triangular points here. So this line has a whole bunch of points that we can sign elevations to. So I'm gonna do a quick way and I'm gonna I'm going to shift down and hold all these elevations, and I'm going to assign it an elevation of 48. I already know that this surface is around 45 uh, feet in elevation, uh, and let me show you kind of how I got that. So there's one step I did. I assigned the pond top of bank to 48. Let me just hover over, and you see my cursor, how it says EG 44.7? 
So I know that I'm, you know, ballpark in the area of elevation of 45, 44, you know, 43s. I'm going to go ahead and set that bank at 48 like I did. So here's a different way to edit the elevations. I'm going to highlight that contour right there. And I'm going to go to this quick elevation edit. So I really, really like this tool. This is one way to edit any elevation, and this is also a tool to modify different slopes. So let me go ahead and press that little lightning bolt. As you can see, I can hover over these different elevations. So all of these points, I can tell, are at the elevation zero. And I can, you see how uh, I can grade a certain percent between points? I really, really like this tool. So I'm going to go ahead and click this point right here, and it's going to ask me down below in this command tab to specify an elevation. So I'm going to go ahead and specify an elevation of, let's say, let's say 44, because my pond top of bank is at 48. Let's set this water level of the pond at 44 just for the purposes of this, and specify point. So I already did it. So if I hover over, now you can see when I hover back over this point, you can tell that it's at 44. I'm going to go ahead and just erase these two lines. I don't really need them. In today's lesson, I'm just going to show you normal water and top of bank. So again, I want to show you again, we can go up to the elevation editor. I want to make all of these points 44 because this is the water level of the pond. So we now have enough data right here to create and add to our surface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight these two feature lines that I made, and I'm going to add them to our FG surface as break lines. Again, this definition tab right here is how you're going to define your surface. So let me go ahead. I have my feature line selected. I'm going to right click and I'm going to do add. You can give a really good description. I like giving a good description. I'm just going to call this pond one break lines. Okay, so now we have pond one break lines, and now we have added these to the surface. And since my style is on a contour style, you can tell that we have now created a surface. This is awesome. So let me hover over this. You should be able to see that I have an EG and an FG. My EG is at about 44.9, and my FG is at 44, because that's where I set the normal water line. So that is how you simply create a surface. And I can do that with the lot lines. I can do that with these track lines. We can actually start building the surface out. But before I get into any of that, I want to show you how to use grading groups. Grading groups are a quick way to grade around a site. So let's say if I have this pond top of bank, I can use a grading group to see where we daylight in our grade, meaning where we are matching the existing grade. In order to use a grading group, I'm going to select this pond top of bank. I know that this pond top of bank is going to be relatively higher in elevation than the surrounding grade. I know that because it's at elevation 48, and when I hover around the EG, it's at an elevation of 43. So I'm going to show you how to use a grading group. So click your feature line that you want. And up here in the ribbon of your feature line ribbon, you have these things called grading creation tools. Let's go to that. So here I have grading creation tools. And we have this toolbar show up. I'm going to go to this drop down menu. And I'm going to scroll up. And I know that I have some grading tools in here. So I'm really, really interested in how this pond grades to an existing surface. So I'm going to go to 4 to 1 grade to surface. Now the reason I have 4 to 1 grade is because, at least in Florida, this is the typical maximum grade that we can grade uh, in areas. Uh, sometimes 3 to 1 is allowed, but 4 to 1 is best engineering practice. So I'm going to use 4 to 1 and I'm going to go grade to a surface. Now, in order to actually use this tool, you want to hover over this icon here, and this will be Create Grading. So we are going to start our grading using the grading creation tools. So this is perfect. So it asks me what I'm targeting to. It needs some sort of surface to talk to. In this case, I want to grade down to my existing grade. I want to see where my slope of my pond intersects the existing grade. So I'm going to press OK. 
Now we're cooking with fire. So it says, select the feature. Again, I'm gonna select that pawn top of bank and it's gonna ask, what side do you want to start grading? Obviously, I don't wanna go inside of the pawn. I'm not grading inside of this feature line. I'm grading outside. So let me click outside of this line here. Now it's gonna ask me if I want to apply the entire length. This is really important. So I'm mostly interested in where this line that borders the wetland, I'm, I'm more interested in that line and how it ties into this wetland here. I could care less about how this grade ties into my lots because I haven't graded my lots yet. So in this case, I want to tie into an existing grade just along this curve right here. So I don't want to imply it, apply it to the entire length. I'm gonna select no. Now it's gonna ask me, select the start point. Notice how when I hover over this feature line, it shows me uh, a little crosshair. I want to start at about, let's say this point right here. I want to start somewhere right there. All right, so I'm going to start here. So now it's selecting that start point, press enter. And then it's going to ask me to specify the end point. So again, I'm really just interested in how it grades along this wetland. So I'm going to pick this point roughly there as the end point. It's going to ask me for the station. I'm going to press enter again. So now it's going to start asking me some questions. What's going to be my cut slope? And then it's probably going to ask me what, what's going to be my fill slope. Again, I just want to know how this pawn top of bank grades down to existing grade. So I just want to use four to one altogether if it's in a cut condition or in a fill condition. So I'm just going to go ahead and press enter. And then it's going to ask me what the fill slope is. Again, I am just going to press enter because I'm fine with four to one. And let's see what kind of magic happens here. Perfect. This is exactly what I expected. So right now, our pawn top of bank is grading very, very close to that pink line. That pink line is a wetland setback line that we're actually trying to stay out of. So what this can do is it can help us understand where we are making our grading impacts. If we wanted to try to maintain our grade out of this buffer, we might want to consider shifting this pond in or lowering that top of bank. Now, since we just created a grading group, I want to show you how to add our work into that surface. And it's as easy as selecting that outer line right there. So what this grading tool did was that it created a feature line for us. So what we call this feature line here is our daylight line. It's a typical term that we use in the engineering field. This is a, a daylight grade line, meaning this is where we are matching our existing grade. So in order to add this to our FG that we created, we can add it as a break line. So I'm going to go up here to the break line tab, and I'm going to do add. And I'm just going to call this pond one daylight grade. And I'm going to call it grade line. I'm going to press OK. And voila, we have now added that line to our surface. So we know exactly how this pond is grading adjacent to this wetland. Now, what I really, really like to do is I like to do a quick profile. And you can actually cut a quick profile if you go up to this Home tab. Let me go up here to Profile. Let me do a quick profile. And then it's going to say Select an Object. Okay, I didn't draw a polyline. That's typically how I would do this. But I also can do this by points. So let me select a point. I'm going to select a point right here, and then I'm just going to go somewhere in that wetland. Press Enter to end. So now we get this dialog box that pops up, and it's going to ask what surfaces I want. I do want the EG, and I want the FG in here. It's going to ask for your style. I'm going to press OK. Now it's going to say Select Profile Origin. So again, I can drop this profile anywhere I want. All right, so I was able to drop my little quick profile right here. And obviously, I don't have any great styles on here right now. But this right here is that existing grade surface. And right here is the pond that is daylighting onto that existing surface. So this is a quick way to cut a quick profile and see how you're grading. Obviously, you're not going to really build a, a pond with this kind of triangle berm, 
but uh, we can get into more detail grading in later videos on, on how we would actually build uh, a real pond. I hope you guys learned something new. Again, in this video, we learned a lot about feature lines and how to create a surface, and we dove into the different feature line tools and grading groups, as well as developing quick profiles. If you found this helpful, please hit the subscribe button and like this video, and I will continue to create more. Also, comment below on what you would like to see next. Thank you and have a good night.